recognized uh, officially in three or four European countries only, Spain, Belgium, and maybe uh, Switzerland. Okay, that's all. Apart from that, Islam is rec not recognized officially, legally. And uh, because of this, because of this, it is true that we as Muslims are protected under, we as Muslims are protected under the European uh, human rights system, uh, law, yeah, but we are not, we are not protected under uh, the British system as a community who uh, has his own needs and requirements. Is that clear? So when we win a case, we win it under what? Under the European human rights law. And that is very important to be understood. So what do we want? No, we want to reach to a level where Islam and Muslims are officially recognized. So what does that mean? It means that we don't need to fight a case and we don't need to take it to the European court in order to win for example, a sister wants to wear hijab, or maybe a brother wants to have a break for his uh, prayer, or we want a masjid to be built in a certain area. Let alone, let alone have Islam been taught in the educational system, or let alone that some elements or certain elements of the Muslim personal law to be integrated or incorporated within the, the judicial system. Okay, that what we mean, that is what we mean when we talk about Islam is officially recognized within the European landscape or within, sorry, the British landscape. And let me give you an example. Yeah, maybe that will be, that will make it uh, clearer. In, in, in most of the countries in the world now, they are applying monocultural system by law. For example, uh, Tunisia or maybe Mexico, they are applying monocultural system. Means this country is a Muslim country, this country is a Christian country, and that's all. Full stop. Now in Britain, in Britain we don't have a written constitution. Are you aware of this? Some people say we don't have a constitution. That might not be a, an accurate statement. The actual statement is to say that we don't have a written constitution because the constitution in Britain can be taken from uh, old cases, from judicial, uh, from uh, judgment, uh, etc., from the norms, from the culture of people, from what people accepted, etc. So, uh, other countries, they have written, they have written constitutions. And one example, مثلا, of a written constitution or a country that has a written constitution is Canada. And Canada is defining itself as a secular plural country or a secular multicultural country where Islam is recognized but has not been officially recognized on a wide scale on all the official parts of the Canadian system. Take India for example. Indian is defined as a multicultural or a secular secular multicultural country. Islam there is officially recognized and Muslims there are protected by law and they are accepted as part and parcel of the landscape of India. Forget about be, them being tortured etc. This is something else but it's not officially like this. The best example that I can give you or I can imagine is the uh, Malaysian example. Malaysia is, although it defines itself as a Muslim country, yet the practice of uh, the legal system of Malaysia is a multicultural uh, practice, whereby, uh, as you know, in Malaysia, 60% are Malays, Muslims, 30% are Chinese, mainly Buddhist, okay, and 10% are Indians. Some of them are Muslim, some of them are Christian, some of them are uh, Hindu, etc. But the Chinese are recognized as not Chinese, as Malaysians. Okay? But they are recognized as a community that has its own needs and requirements. 
and they are allowed to practice their religion protected by law and law have to subsidize for their religion or for their, for re, their religious practices. Not only that, but I have heard that they are allowed to teach in state schools in Chinese because they are part of the country and there is no dominance of that country. Now, this kind of setup, I believe that it is the best setup for Muslims, at least until we see as yani, which is our dream, the Islamic State or Islam all over the world. Now, that setup for Islam and Muslims in the UK or in any European country, we don't need to be worried about uh, many other many other laws that set up against Islam because Islam now became part of the system. Now, in a manifestation of that is mainly two things. When we see in the educational system, when we see in the educational system that uh, the educational system caters for the Muslim students' needs, whether primary in primary schools, secondary schools, or universities. When the system, the educational system, caters for their needs, then we can see that, yes, we have reached to that level, or we are about to reach to that level. Uh, this is in terms of education. In terms of uh, the judicial system, which is a matter of concern for so many Muslims, when we see some Islamic uh, principles being incorporated officially within the judicial system. It means when you have a divorce case and you go to the court, they tell you you are Muslim, then you need to go to this Islamic court or this section of this court, or maybe these are the officially recognized Imams who can conduct your divorce or your marriage or they can deal with your cases and their approval is recognized and we cannot conduct anything before you receive your approval from them. That is another thing. Uh, inheritance law, for example, we don't need to go around the system by having a trust in order to be able to distribute, uh, sorry, first of all to have a will in order to distribute our assets or the assets of the deceased according to Islam. But the system itself recognizes if the family is Muslims, then they are willing, uh, sorry, they are allowed by law to distribute the assets according to their own faith. So that is what we want to achieve. Of course, we can explain more about this, but these are the main two examples in the educational system and in the judicial system. So, and that is the goal. Now, if we don't identify, this is the point, if we don't identify a goal for Islam and Muslims in this country, we won't be able to see any future for Islam and Muslims. And hence, any movement or any uh, activities towards any kind of a change, we might not uh, be able to value it. And in fact, in many cases, we will sit passive, not doing anything. And in many other cases, we don't know what to do. Why? Because if someone is swimming in an ocean and he doesn't have a direct, and he doesn't have a, a target to reach to, he might swim in the ocean and he is about to reach to his destination, but he is not aware. He is unaware that that is the destination. So he might go all the way, okay? back thinking that is still the destination is so far and this is the problem of so many shabab when you are discussing with them with a voting or involvement or a change in the society they say what is the point and they always value everything happening in the UK or any activity or any engagement or any involvement just they value it on the issue of war in Iraq war in Afghanistan war in terror that's all that's all what they see. But you are telling them, okay, apart from those things, you have children are going to schools. What are you going to do with that? You have planning permissions. You want the planning permissions. You have even uh, Muslim, Muslim